Good evening and welcome to Maple Grove Lutheran Church as we worship together this Thanksgiving Eve. And as we begin, let's acknowledge that this isn't the Thanksgiving we hoped for. We're likely feeling down and sad and we'll miss gathering with a larger circle of family and friends. The challenge and the hidden blessing of this year is learning to appreciate what we have. We have and continue to be church together using new and creative means to do so. It is good to turn our eyes to what God has done to see the fullness of his love and provision. You know, I can't imagine observing Thanksgiving in a right spirit without worship, so let's give thanks that we can worship together tonight. Please greet each other on our Facebook page as you view this service, and hey, let's fill it up in the comment section on Facebook, sharing what you are thankful for. Tonight, we're keeping the tradition of inviting a young adult on to give the Thanksgiving Eve message. Let me introduce Amanda McGlynn. She was born in Honolulu, Hawaii, and first felt the call to ministry at age 14. Amanda double majored in theology and global studies at California Lutheran University, then went on to pursue her Master of Divinity at Luther Seminary. She completed her seminary internship last year in North Carolina and now lives in LaGrange, Texas, where she and her husband Cole uh, are completing their studies. Cole's completing his internship year. Amanda is currently serving as a synodically authorized minister for Joyful Life Lutheran Church in Magnolia, Texas. Amanda and Cole will graduate from Luther Seminary next spring, and they look forward to beginning their first calls wherever the Lord may need them. Since safety compels us to close the church to in-person worship for the time being, you are invited to join us online each Sunday at 9.30. With members uh, in this season lighting the Advent wreath each Sunday, you can sing along to the hymns of the season. Our families have created a virtual children's Christmas service for December 13th, and we're still planning our Christmas Eve worship, and whatever happens, we hope to conclude it in the parking lot singing Silent Night by Candlelight. Women's Christmas dessert drive through is December 5th. Yes, you heard that right. Our parish life team has come up with a wonderful way to still have this event safely. With a fun drive through at church, we're bringing out thematically decorated tables. Pray for some cooperative weather so we don't have snow piling up on the dishes. <laughs> you'll, you'll take home a dessert, an Advent devotion, a goodie bag, an ornament, and then you'll go home and tune in to hear an inspiring message from our evening presenters. Our children's virtual Christmas program is titled, A Christmas to Remember, and it will be. Let's remember that in Jesus Christ, we always have his light to guide us through challenging days. So I'm here to say tonight, we're not gonna miss out we're going to celebrate the same things in new ways. We're going to celebrate the love that was made visible to us in the birth of Jesus Christ, our hope. And we want you to find that hope and remain connected in this community of faith until the danger passes when we can worship in person and make a joyful noise together. The worship bulletin for this service is available on our website worship page. Hope you'll join in singing at home as we sing our gathering song now.
Let us pray. Almighty God, our Father, your generous goodness comes to us new every day. By the work of your Spirit, lead us to acknowledge your goodness, give thanks for your benefits, and serve you in willing obedience. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. A reading from Deuteronomy. For the Lord, your God, is bringing you into a good land, a land with flowing streams, with springs and underground waters welling up in valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive trees and honey, a land where you may eat bread without scarcity, where you will lack nothing, a land whose stones are iron and from whose hills you may mine copper. You shall eat your fill and bless the Lord your God for the good land that he has given you. Take care that you do not forget the Lord your God by failing to keep his commandments, his ordinances, and his statutes, which I am commanding you today. When you have eaten your fill and you have built fine houses and live in them, and when your herds and flocks have multiplied and your silver and gold is multiplied and all that you have is multiplied, then do not exalt yourself, forgetting the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery, who led you through the terrible and great wilderness, an arid wasteland with poisonous snakes and scorpions. He made water flow for you from flint rock and fed you in the wilderness with manna that your ancestors did not know, to humble you and to test you and in the end to do you good. Do not say to yourself, my power and might of my own hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, so that he may confirm his covenant that he swore to your ancestors, as he is doing today. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Psalm 65. You are to be praised, O God, in Zion. To you shall vows be fulfilled. To you, the one who answers prayer, to you all flesh shall come. Our sins are stronger than we are, but you blot out our transgressions. Happy are they whom you choose and draw to your courts to dwell there. They will be satisfied by the beauty of your house, by the holiness of your temple. Awesome things will show us in you, will, you will show us in your righteousness, O God of our salvation, O hope of all the ends of the earth and of the oceans far away. You make firm the mountains by your power. You are girded about with might. You still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the clamor of the peoples. Those who dwell at the ends of the earth will tremble at your marvelous signs. You make the dawn and the dust to sing for joy. You visit the earth and water it abundantly. You make it very plenteous. The river of God is full of water. You prepare the grain, for so you provide for the earth. You drench the furrows and smooth out the ridges with heavy rain. You soften the ground and bless its increase. You crown the year with your goodness and your paths overflow with plenty. May the fields of the wilderness be rich for grazing and the hills be clothed with joy. May the meadows cover themselves with flocks and the valleys cloak themselves with grain. Let them shout for joy and sing. 
A reading from 2 Corinthians. The point is this. The one who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and the one who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each of you must give as you have made up your mind, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance, so that by always having enough for everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. He who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way for your great generosity, which will produce thanksgiving to God through us. For the rendering of this ministry not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also overflows with many thanksgivings to God. Through the testing of this ministry, you glorify God by your obedience to the confession of the gospel of Christ and by the generosity of your sharing with them and with all others while they long for you and pray for you because of the surpassing grace of God that he has given you. Thanks be to God for this indescribable gift. Word of God, word of life, Thanks be to God. At this time, we welcome our guest preacher, Amanda McGlynn. The Holy Gospel according to Luke 17, verses 11 through 19. Glory to you, O Lord. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through the region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, ten lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out, saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were made clean. Then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and praised God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, Were not ten made clean? But the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except for this foreigner? And he said to him, Get up and go on your way. Your faith has made you well. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I once read a book by a man who had spent time in the 90s living in a leper community in Calcutta that Mother Teresa oversaw. He talked about reading parts of the Bible then, like John 15, which says, Very truly I tell you, all who have faith in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. In all of this author's stories about Calcutta, in all his time there, he admits the disappointment he had at first, that no matter how strong his faith became, he never healed anyone, and certainly never felt like he did things even greater than Jesus. And beyond that, all those he worked with, who lived with leprosy every single day, even by their faith, were never healed of their leprosy. They were never healed of it by anything. And yet, in the midst of his disappointment, he began to discover that the greater things that he and others did, and even the greater things that Christ did, were not just miracles. He started to see that miracles actually weren't so much an expression of Jesus' mighty power as of his love and its lasting impact. Miracles for the sake of a power spectacle was the temptation Jesus faced in the desert earlier in his ministry, to turn stones into bread or to fling himself from the temple. But what Jesus did that had lasting significance were not the miracles themselves, 
but Jesus' transformative love that was shown through them. It's the demonstration of Christ's incredible love that still impacts us today and is still at work in our lives here and now. It's Christ's love that changed communities in Jesus' day. Yes, a person being healed of a terrible disease like leprosy is miraculous and wonderful and a tremendous act of mercy that I'm not trying to downplay. But what we talk about thousands of years later isn't that a nameless man in a place in time that we all have little connection to was healed. That man died eventually, so did all who knew him, and so did the physical work that Jesus had done in healing him. The miracle lived on, though, through the love that Christ had showed in the act. I don't know about you, but I haven't healed anyone of leprosy lately. I haven't turned water into wine. I haven't raised anyone from the dead. I haven't fed thousands of people in a single day. Jesus did all of those things, and we celebrate and uplift them as miraculous examples of love and service. And yet, after Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, Lazarus still died eventually. After lepers were healed, they still didn't live forever and likely died of some other disease much later in their lifetime. Thousands were fed, and yet they would be hungry again the very next day, or even later that same day. In many of the stories that we tell of Jesus' lifetime, the life-changing part for the people Jesus encounters, the reason we still tell about their stories thousands of years later isn't because of the act that was done. It's because of the lasting experience of Christ, who each of these people encountered. We hear about one of those stories today, of nine lepers who experienced Christ once, and of one whose response brought him to experience Christ a second time. The lepers in our gospel story for today were touched by the love of Jesus Christ. It was knowing Jesus that changed them, allowing them to enter into a community that they had been so isolated from because of their disease. When Christ comes into our lives, even just passing by, we are all completely redefined by the love that that new identity in Christ brings each and every one of us. We are brought into the community of the body of Christ. We give thanks, we worship, and we are called to return to Christ again and again because of the love that Christ has showed us because of all the ways that we experience it that have changed our lives for good. In returning to Christ, that transformation continues. Christ has changed my life for good. His love has called me into a life of ministry in being one more voice to tell and show God's love to others so that through each other we may be transformed into a newer and more abundant life. I felt called to ministry since I was about 14 years old, and in hindsight, with everything that was going on in my life then, feeling a call to ministry seems like a surprising thing to grow from it all. Around that time, my mother was facing some very serious health problems. She ended up in the hospital for nearly two months, and during that time, she was unable to walk or feed herself. She was unable to use any motor skills in her hands or her feet or to control her bladder. She had severe brain damage, which meant that she was very confused and didn't know who I or anyone else was. The doctors didn't think she was going to live through this, and they told us that if she did, she would need to be institutionalized for the rest of her life because of the parts of her brain and her nerves that were damaged, she would never recover or even improve from any of her mental or physical disabilities that she suddenly had. No matter how many of us prayed and begged God for healing, it felt at the time like prayers weren't being answered. It felt like our family, it was the group of lepers in the gospel text today, begging Jesus for mercy and being told, Go show yourselves to someone else. Try doctor after doctor. Go to appointment after appointment. And yet, as we went through everything, 
as she eventually came home from the hospital. As we cared for her at home for months and for years, we slowly recognized on our way how she was being made well. Like the lepers who heard Christ and followed him, left him obediently, yet probably disappointed. It seemed like Christ had done nothing for them, not realizing the love that was being poured on them and working in them in every single step that they took. A year later, my mom was able to walk with a few steps with a walker when the doctor said that she would probably never stand again. She called me by my sister's name for over a year, but eventually, very gradually, learned to call me by my own name and then learned to know the difference and to remember. She regained enough strength in her hands to be able to feed and to dress herself. Before all this happened, she had been a preschool teacher and a special needs specialist. And one of the things that she is most proud of is re-potty training herself. The parts of her brain that control all of those bodily functions that allow her to walk, to remember, to be continent, to care for herself. Those are parts of her brain that are permanently damaged or even dead. MRI scans showed that loud and clear still now. There's no medical explanation for how or why she recovered at all, and yet she is alive and well 10 years later, doing long hikes and dance classes, joking with the family about old stories that she recalls better than any of us do. I do believe in miracles because I have seen one and experienced how a miracle doesn't stop with healing, but continues in what's being made possible for our family through the new life of my mom. And because I have seen one in my own family, I can read texts like this, like our gospel lesson for today, and I can rejoice for the physical healing, but rejoice far more for what that physical healing has caused. It caused all of those lepers to be able to rejoin their community, to reconnect with all those who were lucky enough not to be lepers. It turned them into living, breathing examples of the mercy and love of God, which their very existence would be a testimony of for the rest of their lives and for far beyond. Of all those in our text for today, only one returns to thank Jesus for what he had done for him. In his thanksgiving, this man was blessed with a second experience of Christ's love and mercy, just as we all experience Christ's love, not once, but over and over again throughout our lives. His faith had made him well far beyond just his physical rehabilitation, because it brought him into new and deeper relationship with Christ and with those around him. The Samaritan leper reminds us all that relationship with Christ isn't just begging and receiving, but it's the faith to let our whole selves be changed, to let our whole lives be redefined and our purpose to be made new by what Christ is, has, and continues to do in each of us. So today I give thanks for the love that Jesus has brought into my life because of how it changed and shaped and empowered my own family's relationship with God, which by no means is perfect, but is much stronger and deeper than it ever was before. I give thanks for the opportunity to share this story with each of you and pray that the Holy Spirit may use this to pass on just a little bit more hope in what seems like hopelessness. And I invite you all to give thanks that even in the midst of grief and sorrow and hopelessness and coronavirus and everything else in our lives and in our world, we are given the faith to believe wholeheartedly that God is working in our lives for good, even if we might not realize that yet. So may the hope and love of Christ be with each of us in the miraculous, and in all of the ordinary that comes after it. Amen.
longing for Christ's reign to come among us. We pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Gracious God, you send from your abundance the people, talents, and resources needed for all the ministries of your church. We give thanks for the work you have accomplished through this congregation and ask your continued blessings in our ministry together. By your Holy Spirit, inspire and guide our serving that we may adapt ministry and outreach to the needs of this time. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Maker of all things, you open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living creature. We praise you for crowning the fields with your blessings and enabling us once more to gather the fruits of the earth. Teach us to use your gifts carefully that our land may continue to yield its increase. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Almighty God, all thoughts of truth and peace come from you. Kindle in the hearts of all your children the love of peace, and guide with your wisdom the leaders of nations, so that your kingdom will go forth in peace and fill the earth with the knowledge of your love. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Loving God, you open our hearts in compassion for one another. We give you thanks for the caring and healing received through the hands and feet of your servants. Send us to love those most in need of your mercy. We ask your protection for doctors, nurses, and healthcare workers, and healing for all those who have contracted the coronavirus. Surround those who struggle with illness or other difficult difficulties of life and bring them to wholeness. Especially we pray for Elizabeth Crow, Sharon File, Doreen Mayer, Jenny Molner's uncle, Bob, Paul Goffin, Lisa Hansmeyer's sister, Sandy, Sarah Price, Steve Hansen's father, Paul, Nick Otkins' grandparents, Mark Steele's grandmother, Mary, and those whom we name in our hearts before you. O oh God, your mercy is great. Hospitable God, you connect and strengthen us through bonds of family and fellowship. In this time of separation, comfort us with your presence. Strengthen us in hope until that day when we can safely gather. We give thanks for technology that provides ways to see and hear each other. Be with those who are alone and those who work on this holiday. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, we give thanks for the love and care we have received from saints who have gone before us. By their example, enrich the generosity of our witness to others. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God, sovereign, savior, and spirit 
be with you today and always. Amen. Rainier, I want to thank you for giving us songs of thanks to sing tonight. We are grateful. Have a blessed and joyous Thanksgiving. And now, beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.